In 2018, we embarked on the journey of a lifetime, living and traveling full-time in our self-converted van. We're going to go for it. Join us as we continue to explore the beauty around us, one adventure at a time. Last week, we had some mechanical issues. We had a flat tire, we had brake issues, we had a dented transmission pan, and while you never want to deal with this on the road, the timing was perfect because we were on our way to Merrimack, New Hampshire, where we had an auto appointment already scheduled for a very long list of maintenance issues. With the excellent customer service at Merrimack Auto Center, we were back on the road the same day, and now we begin our very slow trek west. But first, we stop off in Vermont. I don't know how Dave saw this patch of mushrooms, but he came to a dead stop in the middle of the road, jumped out, ran out into the forest to confirm that they were indeed oh, oh, chanterelles. Chanterelles. <laughs> Drove up the road to find a parking spot and ran back to harvest some. No. Come here, Rudolph. Come here. Are those all chanterelles? Yeah, these are all chanterelles. I'm only going to take just enough for one meal. Wow. <laughs> there are a lot of them. Good one. Dang. They're perfect right now. I mean, these, some of these are done, but some of these are fresh. Are those I think that's plenty. That's all I'm going to take. But look at those. Yeah. Yummy. Those are nice. Look at this one here. Wow. There's lots more, but I'm not taking them all. Here. I'll take that. You show them where all the mushrooms are. Okay. Come on, Come on. Yeah, you start taking a close look and they're just all over through here. I probably grab the four or five biggest ones. I'm going to leave the rest of them. Some of these are just coming up. I actually had to pull the leaves away. But they're just scattered all throughout here. Pretty darn awesome. I get excited when I find yummy wild mushrooms like this. This is gonna be a real treat. There's a couple more. And these are quite a bit bigger than the ones I was finding in Maine. I know they get giant in some states like Washington and Oregon, but these are the nicest ones I've found so far on the East Coast. Yummy. I'll be keeping my eye out for different kinds of mushrooms while we're here. Having only left the mechanic just a few hours earlier, our hearts sank when we heard this hideous screeching sound coming from our left front tire. We stopped, we backed up, we went forward, and thankfully, this little rock that just gave us a heart attack dislodged itself out of our wheel assembly, and we continued on as normal.
<laughs> Hi, Rudel. Oh, he's happy to be here. Today we are in the Green Mountains National Forest, just outside of Manchester, Vermont, I think, because we don't have internet, so I'm kind of taking a little bit of a guess there. But this is free camping, 14 day stay limit. We are currently working our way west towards Wisconsin and Minnesota, but we're enjoying this little stopover. It's nice and cool. It's the month of August right now, but we're getting plenty of shade as you can see with all the trees. And because of the no internet and the no sun to charge our batteries, we're probably only good to stay here for a couple of days, maybe three or four days at tops. But then I think we're just gonna keep moving west. But the air smells really fresh and clean. There's a little bit of sweetness to it. Really enjoying this location. And it is prime chanterelle mushroom season as well. Lots of wild edibles. Great spot to hang out for a couple days. And you can see we've got another rig that's parked in our spot here. And the guy's a fisherman. He's from about an hour away. And this is a secret spot to come fishing. And he asked if he could park here and we said absolutely no problem. And he let us know that if you follow the little trail that's behind the van for about 15 minutes that it goes down to a creek. It sounds like it might be pretty big and it's got brook trout in it. Definitely wanna check that out. All right, the campfire ring here needs just a little bit of maintenance. It's piled high with ashes and doesn't really look usable. So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and then chop this log up if it's dry. I think it might be, but it has been raining a lot here. And get a fire going, sit around the campfire. And this will also make it nicer for the next person that comes and visit the site. It'd just be a nice clean look to it. All right, so I'm gonna tee a little bit because the wood is wet and use my gas torch. And I decided to go with the log cabin method instead of the teepee because it allows a little bit more airflow. I don't know if it's gonna start. To wait and see if it's gonna take or not. All right, so after using the propane torch for an embarrassing amount of time, I finally got that wet wood burning. And then I've laid other sticks that's gonna go next on the fire around it to hopefully dry it out a little bit. 
And then maybe I'll be able to add a full, a full log and let it burn a little bit while I relax and just watch the fire. These are looking tasty. Of course, make sure you do your own research. I followed a checklist. You'll need to do that too. You have to be 100% sure your mushrooms are the correct ones. Any doubt at all, don't even try them. Yeah, and I just dry cook <laughs> these in a cast iron pan because mushrooms are full of moisture. And I wanted to get all rid of all that moisture because I don't like my mushrooms uh, slimy. So I cooked out the water and then at the very end, I added a little bit of butter and salt to them and that's it. Oh, they came out good. Look how bright green everything is. It's been raining all night and half the day today. And I was a little bit concerned about this road into the campsite until I checked it out. And it's all gravelly, it's hard packed, even though it's wet, we're not gonna have any problems getting in and out. Otherwise we would have left probably last night during the rain. But right now we're going for a hike. We're going on an adventure. We're going on an adventure because we heard that there is an old town an old town back here that was built in the 1800s or something that is pretty much vanished. So I think we're gonna have trouble finding it, but see what kind of hidden secrets we can find. So Riddle's not coming because we may have to bushwhack. There is a trail. The guy that stopped by yesterday, he's not happy. The guy that stopped by yesterday said that you had to walk through a pretty tall grassy field and down the brush to the river. He said it's really pretty and it's worth a walk. But I'm just concerned that we're totally covered in ticks. Yeah, this is tick season and we haven't seen any yet, but that doesn't mean they're out here. So we're going to play it safe. And I'm tick ready. My socks are tucked in. My pants are tucked into my socks. <laughs> yes, my you waist, are. My waistband is tied tight. You are tick ready. <laughs> I'm completely opposite. I'm not ready at all. I'm mushroom ready if I You're find mushroom mushrooms. Ready. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's go let's see what we can find. And This is the first little creek that's just behind where we're camped and you can hear this from the vehicle so it makes a real nice pleasant sound and it's already a little higher than it was yesterday but it's still staying crystal clear. This little meadow's, meadow's pretty high in grass and this is where we were most concerned about Rudel picking up a bunch of ticks and we might as well. We'll have to do a real thorough tick check on our way back. Oh, it's wet. A little bit boggy in here. I think it's just last night's rain. Yeah. Rain pretty good. What kind of snakes are in Vermont? I don't know. <laughs> okay. This is not the walking stick that Dave made me because that one's too nice to use. 
It's hanging above the couch. Well, in reality, the one I made her is pretty heavy, so <laughs> it's not super comfortable for a long hike. Not that this is a long hike, but it's more decorative. I'm pretty sure this is an old road because when we camp, there's a sign that says 322. I usually don't put those at campsites. Yeah, it's a four, I think it's a forest service road. At one time, it could have been one of the old roads into the town, and then it changed over to the forest service road. Just guessing. But it's blocked off. There's no way to get on this road now. It's got rocks, boulders, trees across it. We are coming up on the creek, or the river. You can hear the wind blowing through the leaves and the trees and the water. Gonna get our first look here in a second. Well, the river is beautiful here. I don't know how we're gonna find any old houses or buildings or what's left. Everything is so overgrown. But we'll take a little walk around. Gotta get the drone up. Gotta get the drone up, take a peek. It's a good idea. I stand by you when you're falling When the river is calling I said I love you forever We can make it together Nick said that when you get down here that there's a giant ginormous pile of sawdust. He said from the 1800s. I don't even know how that's possible. So Dave got the drone up and sure enough, he found it. Yep. But it's, it's very close, but we're gonna have to cross the river and boulder upstream. The walking stick is very helpful. Pretty deep through here, Dave. Made it. There's you found a brick. A brick everywhere, so you know we're close. I think the cleared out area probably was where all the homes were. There's a pile of bricks up here by their route. Well, and they just had a massive flood come through here too. Yeah. And this is why we didn't bring Rudel. We're bushwhacking. Oh, I think we found it. Wow, how long does it take a sawdust pile to get this big, considering this is from the 1800s? And there's a road over there, an old road. So the mill had to be really close in here. Yeah, right on the side of the creek. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't know sawdust would hang around that long. Well, I think we're gonna head back. There's a lot of thunder in the distance and it looks like the weather's taking another turn. We got a mile to go back. And we got some bushwhacking to get back to camp and Rudel's probably freaking out with the thunder. All right. Well, we found some evidence. Yep. I don't think we should stay around and explore. No, we need to get back. The thunder's getting more. It's getting closer. And this is a little orchard here and there's little apples on there. It appears to be apples. Wow, that's 
That's a big tree. But there's lots of fruit trees through here. Breaking, breaking track through the jungle. Okay. Head back to the water. Ah. Glad Carrie's leaving. Makes it a lot easier. Are you following the trail of some type? Well, if we don't pick up any ticks doing this, then there's none out here. You all right? Took the quick way down. Okay. Oh, feels good to be back at the water's edge here. Rather hot boulders than have Carrie have to bushwhack for us. I think this is the pool the guy was catching the brook trout out of. I know I'd fish it if I had a fishing license and a pole handy. But we're gonna cross right here. It looks like the shallowest spot that doesn't have much current. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's super dark outside right now. And it's, it's noon. And I don't know if we're gonna make it back. We've still got a mile to go. Uh, we're probably gonna get caught in some, some rain at the very least. We'll have to see how it goes. Go, 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 Carrie. As you can see, it's even darker. Looks like the sun has already set. Listen to the rain coming through the leaves. We didn't make it. We didn't make it. Wow, sounds great though. When Carrie said we didn't make it, she wasn't kidding. It is pouring. I hope my drone case is waterproof like it says it is. Wow. I was really happy with my drone case. It is waterproof and it was dry, so that was good. Uh, the GoPro did get wet, but inside its case, it was dry as well. So that's yeah. good news. But just to be on the safe side, we're gonna do the ending with the iPhone. Yes. Which seems to be completely <laughs> fine. All right, what we need to know about this spot? Okay, so I'm thinking this is mostly for car camping, truck camping, maybe a small class C just because the of smallest class C. The, yeah, because the pull offs are narrow. You're, you're basically taking a narrow pull off from a narrow road. So there's no spots to turn around or back up or it's just very limited. Yeah, there are a couple of really nice spots. Most of them are right along the road, but there are two or three that are pretty nice and three very miles nice. up is a parking lot that's where the pavement ends and it's the Appalachian Trail. Yes. Did I say it right? Appalachian, Appalachian. I don't know I don't how know to say either. it. <laughs> but this is the Green Mountains. And we are two more miles up the gravel road from there. There is no cell service here at all, but at that three mile mark all the way down, it just gets stronger and stronger yeah, and stronger. So if you get to one of the original two or three spots if you get catch one of those off the paved road you will have self-service at least t-mobile right? yeah we have three yeah. three bars four bars of t-mobile at the bottom of the mountain now bring your mountain bike your e-bike there are lots of little roads and spurs to explore um i don't know if the road above us is typically closed or if it's closed because they had major flash yeah. flooding 
a few weeks ago. So there could be even better spots up the road if it opens yeah. up. We just randomly picked out this location on our way through, and it turns out I really enjoyed it. Just mm -hmm. listening to the wind go through the trees and the creek by the side of the camp, I really enjoyed our campsite. And the dappled sunlight through the green leaves. It was really beautiful. You may need to check if, you, if there's any fire restrictions. There isn't, of course, at this time. It's just been raining constantly around here. But something to contact the National Forest Service about and ask. Yeah. Anything um, else? Of course, you know, I know everybody who watches our channel comes with preparations for their bathrooms. Yeah, so there it, we did clean up the campsite, but if you go down any of the side roads or side, side trail. trails. I call it the poop trail. Yeah, people are leaving messes. They're not digging cat, cat holes or they're not taking care of their toilet paper and it, it, stuff like that. You just you have to prepare for and do. I know you guys are, but lots of people aren't. Yeah unfortunately okay before we go just a few miles away there is a really cool miniature golf arcade but most importantly it has a huge ice cream shop yeah <laughs> banana splits sundaes Maple all kinds creamies. of dipped cones the work so you might want to stop and check that out we did <laughs> <laughs> okay um we really enjoyed this spot if you want a place to just kind of go away get off grid no cell service, go up the road about five miles if you want a little bit of cell service. Uh, don't go so far. Yeah, take one of the first campsites if you want cell service. But you might have to time that right because it's not a secret. People know about these locations. Yeah, and I will say, in within five or six miles, there's only a handful of campsites. So have a backup plan if you're coming here because chances are most of these are going to be full. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first one that we found open that we liked was five miles up. And then after that, we didn't see any more. Yeah. All okay. Right. Thanks for watching our video. We will see you next week. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. Thank you for watching. What's wrong with your one eye? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to get you a pirate patch. I've seen it do that before, but... Usually, I think it's allergies or um, being tired or something. But you're not tired, are you? Mm -mm, not tired. It's just that one eye that does it. Mm -hmm. I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes, one time somebody commented that you were drunk. Really? Because your eye. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I just naturally have a squinty eye. <laughs> <laughs>